farming's not something you just get in and get up one morning and say, okay, well, I'm going to be a farmer today. It's something that's in your blood. You don't worry about the money. You don't, you just go out and do it. Over the years, it's become tougher and tougher with the various prices of fuel, uh, the cost of machinery, uh, the economics. We've been doing the horse boarding business since 2004. It's a big part of our income today because with the way farming is and everything, uh, farmers are always looking for different ways to add to their income to subsidize farming. My son wants to get in more into farming. My daughter works, runs the, runs the uh, lesson program and everything. I really do it for them. We got a phone call from our oldest daughter who lives here with her boyfriend. Um, she was hysterical. She said that it sounded like there was a tornado or a freight train coming through the house. They were pretty hysterical and, and upset and didn't know what to do. And so I said, well, just come to our house. Um, as she was pulling out of the driveway, she called us back and she was crying and she said, mom, everything's gone and we couldn't we just really couldn't even wrap our heads around what she was talking about. The night before, I always listened to the weather for the next day or, you know, several days in advance. And that night they said nothing. So that night I had absolutely no warning that, you know, what was going to happen that night. We believe it touched down somewhere down the driveway or off to the from my right hand side, it dropped down, it started hitting the trees. It came right through here and then hit the two buildings that were here. Then it went down, it went across the field spreading debris and it hit uh, approximately 16 homes that were down there. One of the neighbors that lives in the back development behind us walked over and meant to make sure that all the horses were still alive and if we were still alive after that. We were very thankful the horse barn was, really, was standing. That was actually our main concern. Uh, was for the animals and to make sure that they were safe. My, my, well, he's my best friend that uh, I actually had to call him at, at uh, four o'clock in the morning and tell him he just, his trailer was totally demolished. demolished. The storm, the uh, tornado picked it up, moved it over, dropped it back down, turned it on its side onto another trailer, which it totaled both of them. As you can see, this whole side was broken up. Uh, he dropped what he was doing, ran right up here uh, to aid and help us. And without his support, my wife's support, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's something where you just, you know, you'd like to just walk away from it and say, that didn't happen to me. The amount of work that's involved in it is just, it's just tremendous. I'm really doing this for the love of it and for my, my children. We still have a long way to go, but we are making progress. Uh, really, the last several months have been a cleanup mission because of the amount of damage that was done. The support has been absolutely overwhelming. I don't know who made the phone call to who. Uh, before I knew it, we had um, one of the local farmers brought his tractor over and they were trying to clear the driveway for us because there were so many trees broken up in there that we couldn't even use use the other driveway. And as long as we have their support and community support, we're going to keep trying. I don't really know how long we're going to be here. Uh, the, the times are getting harder and harder and after the storm hit us, it's, it's where you make a choice whether you want to keep going or you just say enough's enough. But we are, we are certainly willing to try. We're not going to give up yet.